Hey guys, we're at Prevo Winter Garden and we have been packing up the RV this morning, loading up the car. And Zach, what do you think? Well, you know, there's always some ongoing saga. Now, this time it's, it's you know, it's not a big deal. We're working through it, but you know, as the slide issue that we've had, it's manifested itself in one more way where it's sticking out about that much three inches while we're going down the road on the bottom, but it's pinned in the top. So it's not going anywhere, but it needs to be fixed. And, we and got, on, on, on top of that, like someone pointed out, sometimes that light above his head will flash and sometimes it doesn't. So that's, we're just like, okay, <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. So the old rumor mill's going and the rumor mill says that uh, Prevo at Winter Garden, Florida is really good on slides. So we thought we're down here in the area. Why not have the best guys work on it? So we're here and in a, just a little bit, they're going to pull us in a bay and start working on things. Yeah, when we were at the Prevo Stuff Rally, if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you check it out. We'll put that uh, for you to be able to view. But we had a huge Prevo audience there that we just started polling people. Uh, we've got the slide issue, where do you think we should go? And uh, the Prevo community uh, repeatedly said, go to Prevo Winter Gar Garden. Yep. So. Uh, that's why we're here now and hopefully this will all get solved and we'll show y'all along the way yeah so we're loving it we're just uh you know just have little things you got to take care of along the way so in the meantime instead of staying for however undetermined time in the parking lot which we could we're going to go visit cousin jack and he has a house in florida so we're going to see what that's all about absolutely it'll be fun right here that little yellow Any party words before we leave uh, Cravo? Well, we hope we come back and we got a slide that goes in and out, not one that's kind of in but kind of out. There you go. I'm pretty sure we've seen this coach before. It's a beautiful coach. Love that paint job. But here we're leaving ours behind. A tip that we found out is Google Maps used to send you in here on this back entrance and that all makes sense that's where the big roads are and everything and i'll show you what this entrance looks like and uh for some reason google maps decided to move it oh yeah but guess what we didn't come in that way no we came in little itsy bitsy entrance yeah it's exactly with, what happened with the bus and the toad yeah right yep so don't recommend that nope not a recommendation so this entrance is kind of uh it's larger and it is where you definitely want to enter so just keep that in mind there's uh, two different entrances to the Prevo winter garden and you want to use this back one so what we're telling you it's where the normal people come in unfortunately we're not so normal we were Prevo winter garden newbies that's what this is all about is we're sharing y'all with y'all our newbie mistakes <laughs> and we're being real about it so that was a little squirrely but this is what it looks like this is where you're supposed to be entering right here and that would be at uh balua and stag so look for this ranger park and balua and stag if you come here and then there's like a looks like a highway or something over there but this is much easier. Winston, are you very curious about this bridge? Like, what is going on here? Yeah. Hey guys, we're here in St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the United States. Eight, no, 1565. Wow. Yeah. Can you believe that, 1565? And we are going to be checking out the Lighthouse watchman's home which apparently he lived in a mansion uh pretty swanky for about an 18 you know 15 you got me messed up 1565 yeah and then checking out the lighthouse as well so very historical area it is really cool trees spanish moss there's fern growing on the trees guys we don't get that in texas not where we no, live we don't <laughs> okay we're about to start up so here's where we're going guys
did I say we were about to start up? I think what I meant was we're going to look up. I, I don't think we're going up that. And just a few more stairs to go. We made it to the top and it's really rainy, but it does have great views. Woo, it's freezing out here. Wow. Look at how beautiful. I am getting wet for you guys. <laughs> okay, so I'm soaking wet and I'm taking in the views of this wonderful tower. It's rainy, but it still is a bunch of fun to come up here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Hey, Zach and Jack. Are y'all down there? Zach and Jack. Somewhere in that hole. Hello, boys. Speak up. Hilarious. As you see, the girls made it. Girls rule, boys drool. <laughs> so boys, how was it from this perspective? What you know, the stairs were locked, but we did it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> all five of them. Yeah. See all five steps? There they are. Those are the five we did. These are the steps you did? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, I don't know. We did a different set of steps, guys. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks for letting us know. Linda, did you get a little wet up there on top? I did it. I did it for you fans. Yep, for our followers. Tough women. Yeah, tough women. And you know, the person who ran this lighthouse, her husband died of tuberculosis, and it was a woman who lugged those things up that lighthouse with all of her daughters. Tough women founded this country. Just <laughs> want to say. Women rule. That's women, right. Women rule. Get a little deep here. She, yeah, <laughs> women rule. She told me it. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Which, I'm not saying a word. I know better. Go, so, this is my cousin Jack here. Pretty good guy, bad tastes in teams and shirts, you know, but hey, he er everybody, everybody's got a, everybody's got a and weakness, that's how right? I feel about you. <laughs> Thank you for not uterus. saying bad taste in women. <laughs> <laughs> no, good taste in women, just, I mean, you know, crimson and... Poor blind girl. She has no taste in men and she's blind. <laughs> if it's me. Oh. Uh, Okay, we're in the light keeper's house and we're going down into the basement. This exhibit is really neat because they show you the things they found down under the water from the shipwrecks and they placed them in the basement, which was kind of an interesting idea. Now, right over here, this was fascinating to me because when you're looking things in, for things in the ocean water, you know, it, things get grown up, barnacles, uh, rocks, everything comes around it. This is what a rifle looked like. This is an x-ray, and this is how they could identify the rifle under the water. It's an old flintlock, flintlock uh, rifle, but you can see all the crustaceans and barnacles, everything that had grown over the gun for the years. So to recognize it from the naked eye was very difficult, but they x-rayed it, so now we can see it. Okay, look, this certifies that I did the 219 steps all the way to the top of the lighthouse. How about that? No, he didn't do it. No. I guess not, but Linda did. Lin Linda did. Linda did. Linda did. She did. She really did. Put it up, honey. Put it up. So here at Flagler College, we're taking a tour around the place, and here, for your viewing pleasure, is this beautiful Tiffany glass. Oh, that's good. So the inside of this place is absolutely gorgeous, but the gardens are something else as well. So Flagler, this began as a hotel very high end for the ultra wealthy. In fact, the story goes, not a good story now, but it was what they did back then. The men would come in to pay, and they would send the men over to a pay room. They would send the women over to uh, a lounge area. 
because they said if women saw that much in cash to pay for the room at one time, they would instantly go insane. That's the story, guys. I'm not making this up. It was around $5,500 a night way back then. Boomer. And it was a minimum of four months stay. So you can see how ultra wealthy this was. So that was the inside. Now, look at this. This is the outside. Now, as time went on and Flagler Hotel became in disrepair and bad, the only way they had to keep the place up was they turned it over to become a uh, private university, and that's what it is t today. So there are students that call this their college to go to school at. What was I thinking? What do you think, Linda? Oh, it's so beautiful. You have to come here. And they're doing bell chimes, and there's fountains, and there's gardens, and there's Tiffany stained glass, and Oh my, that's what I think. So here's an old Mo a Ford Model A. I'm pretty sure it was made in the year my cousin here was born. Is that about <laughs> right? Yeah, that's it. My first car. <laughs> okay, that, that's what I was thinking. Of course, me being so much younger, uh, I would have no knowledge of this. But this is, you know, what the guys tell me. <laughs> Well, one of the must stops in St. Augustine is stopping at the Columbia Restaurant, and that is a definite gem. It is a really cool place, right outside as well. So we're eating at the Columbian tonight, and we're gonna be taking you around, very historic restaurant. Uh, it's been around since 1905, and it is a definite must see when you come to St. Augustine. dressing which is a mixture of olive oil, garlic, oregano, salt, pepper, white wine, vinegar, lemon, freshly grated Romano cheese, and Worcestershire. Oh, interesting. It's delicious. Here is the finished salad. So we are back at Prevo, and there's our bus. We have a gate code, so that's lovely. And we are gonna be getting things out of the car. Uh, we're gonna be hooking up the car to the bus. And the new deal is we're gonna be heading to Marathon because Marathon is going to have to take the shelving, whatever, the innards out of the slide in order to Prevo to work on the slide. That's right guys, they're taking out the innards as she said. All the innards are coming out. You know, there's sometimes you gotta get your innards worked on and that's what we're doing. So just keeping y'all updated and uh, we're just out here back at Prevo and we will keep you posted. Well, we are walking Winston today in this beautiful neighborhood in Palm Coast and the ocean is in front of us and along with a golf course so enjoying our time and nice sunny day in florida It's a beautiful day out here on the coast and beauty takes a lot of different forms. It's not sunshiny today, but it's beautiful waves and then behind me, I don't know if you can see all the sea mist that's out there, but that is just a very pretty look. Well, I'm just gonna enjoy this beautiful golf course over the ocean is what I'm gonna be looking at. Yeah, it's really pretty out here. A little, little cool today to jump in the ocean. Got my feet in, that was cold enough. So we're heading into St. Augustine and we're going to be checking out the fort. 
All right, standing right here on the waterway at St. Augustine. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Uh, sail ships behind us, and we're about to head over to the fort. Yeah, you can have a horse-drawn carriage ride or check out the fort. There's just so much to do here. So we're going to show you around. You know, kind of funny thing. No, it's not Linda. It's not the ocean behind us. Oh, stop. What could it be? It's a carriage ride right there, guys. Jump on and go. Howdy, guys. We are at Castillo de San Marcos. Yes, it's an old fort. It was built in the 1600s. She's not looking too bad for her age, right? So 15 bucks per person to get to tour the fort. Let's go. Okay, so we didn't know this is an actual national park. But the great news is, is we have the National Park Lifetime Pass. We paid for it one time, 80 bucks. It gets us into things the rest of our life. It's fantastic. But, there's always a but, right? You have to have the pass physically with you. We had a photograph of the pass. I have my driver's license, but that won't cut it. So guess what? We paid her 30 bucks, $15 each, to get into the fort. Well, this is a beautiful view and well worth climbing up the steps to get up here. You'll see lots of cannons, you'll see great water views, and learn a little bit about the history. Linda, really, come on back. I, I promise I'll be good. I, I will. Come on back, please. All right, in this segment, we're going to have fun with flags. Right here, every flag you want to see that was over the fort, here they are. Thank you, Sheldon. So what is really fascinating that made this particular fort so difficult to penetrate is they have the sloping mounds out there and if the enemy comes up to the sloping mounds, here the military are going to be sitting here waiting to pick them off. And so also up here you can see how thick this wall is. There's no way they're going to be able to penetrate this wall. But if you're up here, you're going to be able to pick them off pretty easily. So it's why they kept on winning whenever they, they had to defend this fort. They always won. And it's because it was just so well laid out and engineered from the very beginning. I thought this was pretty interesting. It is a display of mortars, howitzers, and cannons. Uh, the mortars are very short pieces like this that would shoot a cannonball that would explode so it would go over an embankment fall very steeply at the end and hit the people and equipment right behind a barrier then you'd have the meteor links ones like this and at the far end down there those are the howitzers and they would have a semi-soft arc uh, and then the big cannons would be the longest shooting ones and they'd have a very flat trajectory one of the great things about St. Augustine are all these little sidewalk cafes. A lot of live music too, and this is, looks like a fun one right here behind us. So we're here for Mexican food at Casa Riena. We hear it's really tasty. Okay guys, I got shrimp enchiladas with some queso on it and then a truffled hot sauce. Yeah, you heard me right. Truffled hot sauce. Never heard of it before, but we'll find out. Linda, what did you get? Grouper tacos. I wasn't very hungry, so she said it was a lighter dish, but it looks quite yummy. This is right up Joe's alley. Food show. Jack, what did oh, you get? I got delicious, refreshing chicken enchiladas. Chicken enchiladas. Okay, that looks good. And Joe, what about you? Uh, this is a chicken tinga chimichanga. Ooh. Nice and fried. Yum. Looks good. Okay, so we're at Peace Love and Little Donuts. This place is way too good. There you go. Peace Love and Little Donuts.
All right, tonight it's Italian food. Yes, Viola's has been highly recommended to us, and it is just outside of St. Augustine. Uh, toward Palm Coast. Yep, it's hard to get reservations. Fortunately, somebody canceled theirs. Guess who got them? It's going to be yummy Italian tonight. So we are back at Prevo again, and the coach is ready, waiting for us. And they have a few others that are parked out here. Again, like all of these people, they keep this Prevo area with lots of buses waiting to be worked on. So, here's the plan. We're going to go in, check out the slides, make everything sure everything's working right. We'll pack up, hit the road, head over to Marathon now because we've got to get the interior reinstalled. And once that's done, we're done. We are on the road. Back on the road having fun. But we've been having a lot of fun. So, anyway, good times been happening.